Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about JavaScript and learning about objects and building a quiz. Um, so, so far our quiz is looking pretty good. We, oops, mine's kind of screwed up there. There we go. Um, you know, it's got that a question, it's got a list of answers, it's got radio buttons here that you can check, and then we've got the submit button, right? And so far the submit button isn't doing anything, but what we want to do is we want to handle this and figure out which answer you selected and then figure out if that was the correct answer or not okay so in the uh, the last video we um, you know we added this event listener and we prevented the default behavior and we listed the current element right um, the event target right um, and that is the form right so it's the form that you submitted but what we want to do now is we want to look into that form and find all the list items, right? And then within those list items, there's a label, and within each of those labels, there's an input. And the input is the, the radio button, okay? And then we can ask that radio button if you're checked or not, okay? So let's give it a try. Now, normally you would, you know, a lot of, like most often, not normally, but like often, you would say document dot, you know, query selector, right? Or query selector all. And this would query the entire document. But we don't want to do that. We just want to query just the form that was submitted. Okay? So we can get at the form that was just submitted by saying e dot target. And if we put this before query selector, then we'll just be querying within the document or with not within the document, but within the form that was selected. OK, so just within that, you know, element. OK, so we've got query selector all. And now what we need is we need a, a CSS selector that can look at all the elements in here and identify just um, uh, inputs, right? and maybe just inputs that are type radio button. So we actually don't have any inputs in here that are not type radio button, right? So um, so we could actually just put input here and that would get everybody. Let's, uh, let's actually log that. I'm gonna put constant, um, let's call this inputs equal e.target query selector all and then input right and then we can log that to the console so we'll say uh, console inputs right let me zoom in on this a little bit okay and then let me get my page here and open up the inspector right so I'll get the uh, the console there's my console there and I'll refresh and then if I submit here you can see I get a node list. Let me actually zoom in on this a little bit closer, right? You can see I get a node list and it shows me all of the inputs that are labeled question one. And if I go to question two and I, I click input, you can see I get a second node list here. And when I open that up, I get everybody that's question one, right? Well, actually question two, but it's question one is the, is the name, right? And then we could try that with question three. Um, so here's another one there. I got to scroll up. Oh, and there's question two, right? So, so that's working pretty good. If we had other inputs in here, we could get more specific with our selector. So if you put the square brackets after a CSS selector, right? So it looks like an array in JavaScript, but this is really a string here. And this string is a CSS selector, right? So. So as long as it matches the syntax for a selector, if we're in the quotation marks for query selector, then we're, we're, we're writing a CSS selector, right? So if I say input, square brackets, and then I say type equals radio, then it'll only be inputs that are radio buttons, right? Let's, let's see what the difference is here. So actually, you know, if I, if I refresh and I submit, you know, this looks exactly the same, but you'll see it says type radio, okay? So what if I had a multiple choice quiz, but you could select more than one answer? You know, for that, I'd use a checkbox, right? So if I go up here and I change the input type to checkbox, you know, on my, my, my inputs, right? Now all of these guys are, are checkboxes and I can check them. And if I submit, 
you can see it gives me a node list with nothing because none of these guys match the the type radio okay so um so this is like input type radio right and so this is saying when you use the square brackets is it's an attribute with this value okay so um let's change that back to radio and now we want to do one more thing i want to um i want to uh to uh get only the uh the radio buttons that are selected okay and there should only be one in my case right so right now i'm getting all three of them but i want to get one only the one that's selected so actually there's another css um you know a pseudo class that we can use here and if you put colon checked right so this then you're saying only radio buttons or check marks or check boxes that have the check mark in them right so input is the tag so it must be tag input square brackets says that um, it has an attribute of type and if we put equal because if you just want to get everybody with with a type attribute no matter what the value is you could leave it like this but if you put equals here then you can say it's type with a value of radio and then if we follow it with colon checked then it's only when it's selected right let's give it a try so if i save over here and then i refresh and i click the submit button here you see i get an empty node list because nobody's selected and if i click on the second answer here and then submit i get a node list with one item in it now the way that my quiz works or the way our quiz works right is we we only have one element so i did query selector all but this should really only ever return one item okay so i'm going to change this to query selector just by itself so query selector um, is like query selector all but it only returns one thing and it returns the first thing it, it finds so we can kind of optimize a little bit here though if we wanted to do a more complicated quiz where sometimes you can answer like more give more than one answer to a question then maybe we'd want to use query selector all right but in our case there's only one right answer for each of the questions so query selector will, will be okay right we'll just find the first answer and that should be the one that you've selected or it'll give us n like none if um if none of them are selected right so we'll uh we'll do this and then let's uh let's uh test it here in the browser so i'll click here and you can see i get null because none of them were selected and if i click on this last one and click submit you can see i get input radio question two right okay so that's pretty good um so actually this is not really like inputs doesn't really make sense now right so we're when we're querying which one you checked this is really you know um selected answer maybe is kind of a better description even though maybe it should be like selected input might be better right maybe yeah let's do that let's do selected input like the names that you choose for variables and functions like that they call these identifiers right so like when the names you define for identifiers are super important to writing code it's like actually one of the more important things right um if the names don't make any sense it's really hard to to understand your code so um so i'm gonna i'm gonna do this so let's just give it a quick test here so i can see if i select this one and then hit submit i can see the answer there so now my question is how do i know if this is the correct answer or not okay so let's um and we always know the first one in my quiz is always correct but don't worry we're going to randomize those later right so how do i know which answer is correct let's um let's work on that right so so far i've got the input here and what i'm going to do is just to make this easy now this isn't like you could hack this quiz pretty easily right because you could actually just read the source code and then see the answer so that's actually not an issue for us here we can come back and and kind of work on that later we're just working on getting the code to work we're not writing a quiz that will fool the hackers right so um so what we're going to do here is we're going to put a data property on the input to say whether the answer is correct or not okay um, and if you recall we did this in the previous video um, to uh, 
you, you know, uh, with the with the slides, we gave every slide like a data attribute, right? So we're just going to do the same thing um, here. And uh, let's let's do that, right? So um, this is line is getting pretty long, so we can actually break this into multiple lines. But maybe I'll I'll tab it like this. So now I've got like input, and then I can see like type and name are under input, and then maybe we'll add one more. Don't lose this closing arrow, right? So we'll, actually, maybe we'll do it like that, right? So that kind of reads pretty good. I can see the opening arrow and the closing one, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say data correct equals, and then I'll put the um, the quotation marks, right? And then inside here. I want to determine whether the question is correct or not, right? And uh, essentially, the correct answer will be the ID that you put here in your quiz questions, right? So I always made it the first one, but actually, there's no nothing stopping us from making this any number, right? Okay, so this is a property, and it's at the top level of the question object, right? So essentially, it's in question dot correct okay so what we'll do is we'll say a question dot correct and then if I refresh over here um, I can uh, submit let's submit this first one and you can see question correct oh wait it's undefined I got a problem there let's see if we can fix that um, what am I missing here oh because I put questions I think it spell checked me I just there we go let me put question dot correct right so let's fix that and we'll refresh it and um, I'll submit again oh yeah there we go question correct correct question should be number three right maybe it'd be better if this said like true or false right so let's put a little bit of logic in here and what I'm gonna do is the index of the of question correct the number should match the answer index and if it does then we'll put a true and if it doesn't we'll put a false so um, I'm gonna say question correct equals answer index right so we'll give that a try and I'll, I'll check this first one here and you can see question correct is true and if I check the second one and then submit you can see question cor data correct is false. Okay, so uh, so now we've got our our um, quiz set up. It's got the inputs. Um, the inputs are set up. The radio buttons. They've got the question index. They've got the data correct to tell us whether the answer is correct or not. And when we submit, we can get the selected input, and then we can ask that selected input. Um, if the data correct or the data set correct is um, is true or false, right? And then that way we'll know whether you selected the right or wrong answer, okay? So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll continue the rest of this in the next video.